In late 1939, Dr. Arthur Geschke accepted a call to serve as a medical missionary in Southeast Asia. He, his wife, and their infant son left San Francisco on a Japanese liner headed for Thailand. Dr. Geschke's assignment would be to develop a clinic in Phuket, an island off the country's southwest coast with a population of some 50,000 people. After learning about the church's work in various locations, Phuket's business and civic leaders offered to support the establishment of the clinic. On the clinic's opening day, Dr. Geschke performed surgery on a seriously ill patient. The man had been turned away from a government hospital and was told that nothing could be done for him. Geschke won the full confidence of the community when the patient recovered. Within a month, the clinic was treating 60 outpatients per day, and the 15 beds it had set up for outpatients were continuously occupied. It seemed that practically everyone of importance in the city knew of Dr. Geschke and counted him as a friend, a mission administrator reported a few years later. He added, they told us of several people he had saved from death and about the great good he had done. The United States entry into World War II in December 1941 brought the thriving work of the Phuket Mission Clinic to a halt after just one year of operation. Dr. Geschke contacted the British consul in Phuket and received instructions to arrive with his family at the beach in 10 minutes. There, they were picked up by a British vessel en route to Singapore. The ship was buzzed by Japanese dive bombers, but they did not attack, probably because the captain had ordered the British flag to be removed and replaced with the flag of Thailand, an ally of Japan. The Geschke family and other missionaries boarded the last American freighter out of Singapore before that city was captured. The ship sailed south to Cape Town, South Africa, since a Pacific crossing was deemed too dangerous. Part of the crew deserted in Cape Town, but the ship proceeded to cross the Atlantic, sailing in a zigzag pattern to escape enemy torpedoes. It arrived safely in New York two months later. Phuket Mission Clinic, later known as Phuket Adventist Hospital, reopened in July 1949. New structures have been built over the decades, and the hospital services expanded. Renamed Mission Hospital Phuket in 2002, it's an 83-bed hospital operated by the Southeast Asia Union Mission. After retiring from full-time medical practice, Dr. Geschke moved to a mountain home near Yosemite National Park in California, United States, and continued to practice medicine on a limited basis into his 80s. He died just shy of his 93rd birthday. Dr. Geschke spent his life in service to others, and his legacy lives on to this day. For more stories about pioneer missionaries, visit encyclopedia.adventist.org. It's said that a picture is worth a thousand words. In some cases, it can be worth even more. Before serving as director for the Global Mission Center for East Asian Religions in the 1990s, Clifton Maberly had served a number of years in Thailand as a missionary. He noticed that people were drawn to storytelling through pictures. I was in a village one day with Pastor Mun Lansi, and he said to me, have you ever seen the painting of the last life of the Buddha? And I said, no. He said, every temple has one. And he knew the abbot from that temple. So he went to him and said, can you show this foreigner your picture of the last life of the Buddha? So he came and brought it out and rolled it out. It was 50 meters long. But what was most interesting to me is when we rolled it out, the children who had come to look at me, they suddenly forgot about me. And they went and got their friends and they told each other the story from the long picture that was on the grass. For some time, Clifton had been brainstorming ways to make the gospel message relatable to the Thai people. I already knew that painting was the main means of memory of stories in temples. Paintings are never worshipped here. People never pray to them. We're not in danger of idolatry. But people's way of reminding themselves of their own stories was paintings. Clifton wanted to commission paintings to tell the story of Jesus. He visited the Fine Art University, and one of the painting teachers recommended Clifton talk to his mentor and teacher. So I went to the teacher's college, found him, and said to him, 
I've got a strange thing here. I want to tell a story that hasn't been told in Thailand before, but I want to do it through Thai art. Not because it has to, but because it may speak to heart better and it also will be a talking point uh, rather than bring in art from somewhere else. The accomplished Thai artist agreed. For several weeks, they strategized how to best communicate the story Clifton wanted to tell. They decided to start with a scene depicting Jesus' second coming, a scene that had never been created in the Thai Lana art style often seen in temples across the country. The painting was there being slowly formed in the heart of their home, and there was a big pile of books and spirit prophecy books and books he borrowed from the library there. That was the main thing that was in his lounge room for maybe 10 months while he did the first painting. Every time I visited him, it was there. And I thought, would I put so much effort into telling somebody else's gospel as he put in telling my gospel? After months of laboring over the painting, it was finally finished and placed in the Chiang Mai Adventist Church, located in the culturally rich and historic city center. So this is the picture of the second coming of Christ. Now, um, we have portrayed the second coming of Christ many different ways, but there is a description in Revelation of the rider on the white horse with his following horses as a picture of the second coming. So he's taken that one literally and made this the rival of the rider on the white horse. So all of that is in this picture, this, this struggle between the rescue from light of the people who almost die in darkness but are taken off and the world is left desolate behind it. So this is the first painting that he painted. The Chiang Mai community was very interested in the paintings and would visit the Adventist church to come see them. People came every day to look at the paintings. Teachers would organize even from primary school, from secondary school, from the teacher's college, from the university. They came to get introduced to the pictures, to see the picture as a class project. And Buddhist monks came to the door and said, we heard you have some paintings, can you open the church for us to see them? And so I never had any negative reaction from any of those people. They were all willing to listen to the story from beginning to end, which I can't just bring people from the street and say, let me tell you what Adventists believe about the end of the world. No one's gonna sit and listen. But with a painting, they just listen like lambs and ask many questions about it seem to just open them up to curiosity in a way that talking will never do. By contextualizing the gospel for the people of Northern Thailand, Clifton and the Thai painter opened doors that may have never opened otherwise. They offered the opportunity for people to see a message of hope that most of them would not have listened to if it had not been painted. Now, over 35 years later, these paintings are displayed in the Library of Asia Pacific International University where many of the students are from a Buddhist background and where the climate control can preserve these paintings for future generations to see. Please pray for the people of Thailand and throughout the 1040 window where the majority of people aren't Christian. Despite having different worldviews, using creative means like these create opportunities for connection. What about mission in your community? Are there ways you can contextualize the Adventist message to those around you?